Okay, now I think it's being recorded. And I'll post it on YouTube if, if it works. Okay, so anyway, we've got this angle. This, this was the transfer function right here. Uh, the output was theta. I'm going to bring it back. It's not doing what I want. It doesn't have the time constant I want. I'm going to build a controller. What you do is you say I'm going to compare the theta to some desired value of theta, right? Any of this ringing a bell? And then what happens is you say you're going to bring this out. This was called error. Why do we call that error, you think? It's the difference between what you want, theta zero, and what you're measuring, theta. Did you see any projects or anything that kind of had that? I think so. I think all, both of your projects had this sort of thing. You had an error, something that you were trying to do, and, you, and your equations for the torque had the error in it. You didn't call it error, maybe, but it was the same thing. You've seen this before, okay? And then what you do is you put it through a block, and I'm not sure what I, I named that block. I think I put a question mark on it. You're going to put something in here, right? It's your, you're the designer. You're going to decide what to put in that block. And that block is going to tell me how to take the error that I measure and turn it into a torque. I'm going to do some mathematical function to it and get a torque, right? And what I told you I'm going to uh, teach you is one type of controller, which is called a PID, right? Did I, t did I call it a PID? I said, don't you dare call it a PID. It's not a PID, it's a PID. You sound like an idiot if you call it a PID, okay? It's a PID controller. Okay, uh, I showed you a proportional controller. Proportional controllers, when the question mark is a number times the, uh, uh, well, I guess that's it, number times the, uh, the error. Remember that? You saw what happened. What's the effect of a KP? Remember? Acts like what? Spring. spring. It acts like a spring. So uh, if you're doing something, you say, you know, I'd like to put a spring in there. You know, like, you know, you want the pendulum to kind of swing up and stay there. You want to put a spring in there to have the things. You want proportional control. That's what that's going to do. I derived the, uh, the uh, transfer function for it, and I showed you what happened. I showed you the natural frequency and all that sort of thing. It basically changes the MGL. It's MGL plus KP. That's what happens, right? So you don't like MGL? Fine. Take a KP. You can make MGL whatever number you want. Make sense? That's what happens to it, okay? Then I think I showed you a KP and a KD. This was a PD controller. What you put in there was a KP plus KD S. I call that a PD, proportional derivative. Why did I call it KP? Because it multiplies by the error, right? If you take that equation, KP plus KD S, and shove it into that little question mark, error comes in. Error gets multiplied by KP. That's proportional. That's what it means, proportional. It's Whatever the number is that you're getting, error, and you multiply it by constant, constant, constant. It's, a, it's always proportional. Why is KDS called the derivative? Why do you think? What's the S do for you? It says, hey, take the derivative of this thing for me, okay? That's what S is, right? It says, hey, whatever's coming in, error, okay, take error and take a derivative of it for me. That's what the S is. So the KD is just a, a, a gain. You've used that before, right? Didn't you do PD controllers in your project? I think you did. If you got it right, if it worked, you're probably using it. Now, it's not the only thing you could use. You could be very creative, and it's going to be interesting to see what you do. But, uh, but my expectation is you're probably using a PD. One's a spring. What do you think the D is? Damper. damper. Why do you say damper? Velocity. Right? Isn't it theta dot? Isn't that what dampers do? They multiply by the velocity. So a PD controller is your spring and your damper. Right? I think I derived that for you. What happens to the KD? What happens to the denominator term? You remember? Comes in something like this. It's J S squared plus K D S bless you plus I believe it's M G L plus K P. That's the denominator. I think I derived that. Should be in the notes. Okay? So what is the what is the D? Oh, KS. That's not KS. It's KD. 
So what does the KD do? Gives you damping, right? You want more damping, make a bigger KD. What if you don't like the MGL? I want it to be zero. I don't want an MGL. Could I do that? What would you make KP? Yeah, positive or negative? Negative. Make KP a negative MGL and you won't have any spring. Okay? Now you have to be careful because if you were really doing this, not having a spring would cause the thing to just kind of you know, float there. But what will happen is your KP is going to be, you're going to decide what you want KP to be, right? And let's say you're, in a, in a manu you're manufacturing these pendulums. I don't know why you'd ever make money manufacturing pendulums. But suppose you did. Comes off the assembly line and L is just a little too short this time. Right? L is a little too short. Last time it was a little too long. But you've decided you're on your KP. Right? What happens if L is a little too small and KP is a little too big? You make it negative, right? And you make it a little too big. Let me exaggerate it. MGL came off the assembly line. It was 10. It's supposed to be 11. Right? But you got a little manufacturing errors and stuff like that. Somebody stuck some bubble gum on the end of it. Whatever. Right? You, you with me? It could change. You're manufacturing it. It's not going to be perfect. But you've decided through your math that you wanted KP to be 11 because that was the normal amount. Well, what happens now? Is it stable or unstable? Some saying stable, some saying unstable, some going, oh, I don't know. Well, look at the signs, right? This guy here is a plus. What's this, what's this sign over here? Negative. So you end up with a plus and a minus. What did I tell you about signs flipping on you on that? It's unstable. Well, anyway, if I didn't tell you that, when the signs flip like that, it's unstable. Just like up here, uh, right here. Bring this guy over. So you have plus M, G, L. What happens to the sine of theta? Linearize it, right? It becomes theta. There's a plus here. There's a plus here. What did I say if they, were, if they flip? You know you made a mistake. Well, if they change signs, it'll, it will be unstable. Anyway, check that. It'll, it'll end up being unstable. So what's going to happen is you have to be careful when you start goofing around with these gains. You can, you can do some amazing things, but you can also get yourself into trouble. That's just one example, right? I'm not going to give you errors on the, on the thing. I'm just going to ask you to you know, be able to derive the steady state or whatever. Okay, now last time I think what we did was we looked at the steady state value of theta when you had a PD controller on there. You remember that? You remember? You got it in your notes or not? If not, I'm going to do it again. You have it in your notes? Let's get, the, uh, let's get this guy right here. I'm going to put in a PD controller. P, K, P plus K, D, S. And I want the transfer function. Here we go. Here's the final exam. Ready? I want the transfer function of that. I'm going to put in KP plus KDS. I'll give you some numbers and all that. How do you get the transfer function? You're going to get, you're going to get one block, right? Yeah, you're right. It's theta over theta zero, right? So I want theta over theta zero. I want to get it out of the block diagram and into an equation. How do you get it out of the diagram and into an equation? How do you simplify it? You use Mathematica. How do we use Mathematica? We're going to write some equations. How many equations am I going to write here? Two? How many things you see? I see three things. How many, th how many equations are you going to write? Three. Okay. I see a circle. I see a uh, square. And I see a square with a, with a uh, question mark. And I see another square, rectangle, whatever you want to call it. Right? So I'm going to number them. This is thing number, uh, let's see, we'll use... Uh, We'll use blue. This is thing number one. This is thing number two. This is thing number three. What are my equations? Are you all in the class? Or? Anybody out there? Output one? Right? Isn't that what I do? Output one equals what? Theta zero, good. Theta zero. Minus, I would call it output three, but you could, I won't, I won't say it's not theta, but I'm going to call it output three. 
the reason I'm going to do that is because I get in a habit, right? And so if you want to call it theta, then here, when I get to number three, I wouldn't say output three, I'd say theta equals, right? Because otherwise you're going to end up with a theta, in the, let's just do it, okay? If you did it your way, it would be theta zero, I'll show you what happens, minus theta. Okay? Everybody all right? I'll show you what happens if you, if you do this. It's okay, but you have to now remember that the output of three, you're calling theta, not O3. Got it? That's all. You just have to remember that. Okay. What else? What's the next equation? Okay, very good. Output two equals output one times what? What's inside the box? KP plus KDS. KP plus KDS. Very good. Output three equals what? Output two times or divided by one over JS squared plus MGL. Okay? Everybody okay with that? Okay, now, suppose you use these equations right here. Okay, let me equal state of output one. Okay, suppose you use these guys right here. Count for me the number of things you don't know. Do you know O1? Okay, do you know O2? Do you know O3? Do you know theta? No. How many equations do you have? Three. Okay, now, where's the mistake? I told you what the mistake is. Where's the mistake? What, how did I make a mistake here? What did I do? What did I forget? Theta O3 is not supposed to be called O3 because you decided you wanted to call it theta. Darn. Okay, so what do I have to do? If you want to do what's circled in red. Well, remember, this is not, you're not calling that O3. You're calling it theta. Okay, now let's recount. Do you know O1? Do you know O2? Do you know theta? Is there any O3 in there? How many unknowns do you have? Three. How many equations? Three. It'll work. You just have to remember, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. That, I'm going to call that one. I'm going to be special this time. I'm going to call it theta. Fine. Fine, but just remember that's what you did so that you don't screw it up and then say, oh my God, this won't work. He never taught me how to do this. Yes, I did. Okay, everybody okay with this? What do you think I'm going to do with these equations? Okay, do you want me to do it or shall we pass over that? Can you, can you manage your Mathematica or, or not? Okay, I don't remember <laughs> what the solution is when I get this. Oh, wait a minute, I got it on my notes. Hey, hang on man. Okay, so once you use your Mathematica, the transfer function looks like this. It, and if you need Mathematica, stop by, but it sounds like most of you say, yeah, no, that's trivial, I can swing that, okay, good. Right, is that what you're telling me? Good, all right. Silence means yes, that's right. Okay, so here's the uh, transfer function. Uh, when you solve these three equations, uh, transfer function, which is going to be the output data, right? I'll get O3 when I solve it. O mathematics is going to say O1 equals, O2 equals. It'll say arrow. O1, arrow, blah, blah, blah. O2, arrow, blah, blah, blah. O3, arrow, blah, blah, blah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut and paste the blah, blah, blah behind O3. Okay, that's... And then there's, there will also be a theta zero in there. I'm going to factor that. I'm going to divide that out. Got it? So my transfer function is going to look like this. It's going to be the transfer function is theta over theta zero. And it's going to be in the numerator. Ki. There's a delay in my pen. I'm not quite sure why. Kps plus kd s squared divided by j s cubed plus k d s squared plus k p plus m 
Whoa, M G L. I don't know what that was. Uh, S plus K I. So far, so good. That's what you'll get when you punch it into mathematics. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I don't know what the heck that. Uh, plus K I. Yeah, it's J S cubed plus K D S squared plus K P plus M G L S plus KI. Yeah, yeah. Integral. Uh, oh, oh. That gummit. I'm doing integral. <laughs> okay, look, here's here's what I'm doing. Sorry. I got ahead of myself. I'm using the question mark is equal to excuse me, excuse me. KP plus K D S. I did that one before. Yes or no? Yeah? Yes. Plus KI over S. That's integral. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's the one I just did. Sorry, 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 sorry. For the KP, if you notice the, uh, if you remember in the notes, what happened was uh, you didn't get the same, you know, if, if theta zero was five, you didn't get five on the other one. Was, maybe that's what I was trying to show you. See if I have that one. Yeah. For a PD, let me get a new page here. Let's see if I can get a insert a page. Uh -huh -huh. Insert some pages. We'll start a uh, couple pages. Two pages, three pages. Okay. Here's what happens in a K K uh, D K P D controller. For a PD controller, that's equal to K P plus K D S. And what you end up with is, I think this is the transfer function. Transfer function is KDS plus KP divided by JS squared plus KDS plus KP plus uh, MGL. And this is theta zero, theta over theta zero. Let me make sure this is right. Let me. Yeah, okay. That's it. That's it. Sorry. Nothing. Just my stupidity. Right? So you want a big D or little D? Which one do you all want? You want both. Yeah, you smart as you would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever's in your notes, it's the same thing. These are the same. K D and K D. I'm just sloppy. They're the same. Okay? Same number. Just you know, it's the way my mind works. I gotta change something. All right. Okay, anyway. What is the steady state value of theta when theta zero is five? How do you find that? Good final exam question. Because a lot of you screwed it up on the first exam. How do you do it? How many steps are there? Right? I mean, there's a lot to remember. I know that. Somehow, you've got to remember this stuff. Write it down, right? Okay. Four steps. If it's a constant or a ramp, that's the only thing I'm asking you for in this one. Constant, ramp, and sinusoids you do in a different way, right? I'm going to show you sinusoids if I get to it today. For a, for a constant, what do you do? Step one. You solve for the thing you want the steady state value of. So if I said, oh, I want the error, you would solve for error equals, and where would you find the error? It's output one, isn't it? Isn't that the error? Output one? So you'd say, okay, Mathematica, I don't want 03, I want 01. Boom, step one, you got it? If I say I want theta, which one do you pick? I'll put three. If I said I want the torque, what's the steady state value of torque? I'll put two. You get the idea? Make sense? 
You solve, step one, you solve for whatever it is you want the steady state value of, okay? So uh, I'm going to multiply through by theta zero. <coughs> zero, right? Multiply through by theta zero. So step one, let me put this in, uh, in black. Okay, step one, boom, multiply through by theta zero. Step two, what do you do? You take the Laplace, instead of theta zero, you put in the Laplace transform of the input. The only two inputs I'm asking you to know the Laplace of is a constant and a ramp. Right, a ramp is like a slope, okay? What is the Laplace transform of a, a constant of five degrees or radians or whatever? Five over, five over S, okay, so that's step two. Step two, boom, five over S. Step three. Multiply by S. Now be careful because for the two types that I'm asking you for, that's, you know, you kind of skip over sometimes, right? But if it's more complicated than that, it won't be on the test, but if it's more complicated than that, then the S's won't necessarily cancel. So be careful. Step four. Take the limit as S goes to infinity. As S goes to zero, right. And you can do this in Mathematica. It's real easy to do it uh, here as well. So everything that's got an S is going to disappear, right? So what I've got is, let's see, I'll put it in blue. So now, taking the limit, that one's gone, that one's gone, and that one's gone. What do you, bless, bless you, what are you left with? Yeah, you're left with 5kp over, that's a p, over kp plus MGL. Just so it kind of looks a little better, I'm going to divide through by KP, so that's a 1 over KP. Now, if angle theta was 5, what would the error be? If it was 5, it's not, but what if it was 5, what would the error be? Right? Don't, don't look at that. I'm just saying if theta was, if theta steady state was 5, What's theta naught? Five. What's your error? Zero. It went where you wanted it to go, right? Does it equal five? Is this thing equal to five? Well, the MGL is, I don't know, um, 10, 20, 30, 40. It's a number, right? A number divided by KP. That's not zero, is it? Could I ever get it to be zero? No, not unless KP is infinity, right? So big, big, big KP would make that, that MGL over KP, that'd make that real, 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 real small. So if you increase the KP, you're going to make that, the second term, a little smaller, a little smaller, a little smaller, a little smaller, and it'll be one plus some little number. And it gets close to five, but it's not quite five, is it? Right? So what does that tell you about the error? Can you ever get this to be zero error? No, the math says no, you won't, okay? Now, physically, what's happening? Well, you have a pendulum, and it's got weight. If you want to get it to five and hold it there, you have to apply torque. You've got to hold it there, right? Don't you? Okay, and, the, and think about the controller, right? The KDS means if it ever stops, he disappears. He says, you don't need any damping, you're stopped, right? So if you ever stop somewhere, the damping doesn't give you any torque, does it? Dampers don't give you torque when it's stopped. Where are you getting torque? You've got to have some. KP. And the KP multiplies by error. If the error was zero, how much torque would you have? Zero. zero. So if you ever got to five, it would have to fall away. Does it make sense? You get to five, it falls away. It won't do that, right? Because what will happen is it will fall away, and the damping will say, stop wiggling. And it will be at four, three, two. It will be at some angle, but it won't be five. So far okay? That's where I was last time. Then I said, what are you going to do to fix that? If you say, no, I've got to have it, got to have it, got to have it, we're going to throw in some integral. Okay, and what does integral do? Well, let's find out later, right? But now, let me go back to where I was at when I screwed it all up, and you said, what the heck is the ki, okay? That's where I, right here is where I left off last time. Y'all with me? Okay. 
a good final exam question would be to say, put in K, uh, PD controller and find the, uh, the frequency of, of oscillation, find the time constant, find the steady state value, find the, right? I think that's a good final exam question, yeah. If I said KP as a minus NGF uh, there will be like unstable. Right. If you, if you get rid of this guy, then this one is unstable. Right. Yeah, because what, what happens? Well, if the, if the KP exactly balances the MGL, then the thing is, if you bumped it, I mean, theoretically, if you, if you bumped it, it would just kind of go like this. I don't know. I don't know what it would do. <laughs> okay, you, you got me. I'm going to simulate that. But yeah, I, you know, the point is, even if you try to match it exactly, because I've seen people do this, they'll come in and they'll say, okay, I don't like this term, I want to get rid of it. Now in this case, you've got a good point, I'm not sure I want to get rid of it, but they'll say, oh, I want to get rid of this term, and so they'll adjust this thing to be exactly equal to MGL. Well, that's fine in the lab, but as soon as you go to the factory and start building these things, One's going to come off the assembly line and it's going to be a little heavier than the last guy. And now they don't match. And now that term is back in there and now you've got a real problem. One of the, well, anyway, you, you're worried about the final. I won't tell stories. <coughs> okay. So here we go. Here's a, here's a good final exam question, right? I say, okay, I want the controller to be a PID controller. Okay, and I'll give you some numbers or something. And I say, I want to know what is the steady state value of theta when theta naught is 5. I'm going to do the same thing I just did, but this time I'm going to use the integral, PID controller. Okay? So what happens, all right? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to have your block diagram right here. And you're going to go into Mathematica 01, 02, 03. You're going to get it down to one transfer function. You get the transfer function. I'm asking you to believe me that this is the transfer function. Okay, because you said you can put it into Mathematic and you can find that, right? So now you've got the transfer function. I want to know what is the steady state value of theta when theta zero is five. Let's do it again. Step one, what do you do? Step one, you solve for the thing you want the steady state value of, okay? So, and this answers your question, what's the Ki, right? Everybody knows what the Ki is now? Now that I haven't screwed it up. Okay, so you solve for the thing you want the steady state value of. Step two. Yeah, put in the Laplace transform. Okay, so step two, boom. He was a five over S. Step three. Multiply. Multiply by S. Bang, bang. Step four. Take the limit as S goes to zero. Okay, that one's not too hard. So I'm going to use yellow. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one all of that. What are you left with? Yeah, it's going to be 5Ki divided by Ki. Bang, bang. What's the answer? 5. Okay, tell me about the error. At steady state, what is the error? Zero. 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 How does that work? Well, here's how it works, okay? Now, it's all kind of in there together, so it's not, you can't say, well, the damper's gone, the spring's gone, this is gone, this is gone. You can't really do that, but it makes sense if you say, okay, they're going to be small for, okay, he's going to start off at zero. He's got an error in the angle, right? So the KP comes in and says, apply a torque. Boom, he applies the torque, he starts coming up. The damper says, no, no, you're going too fast, going too fast, and it slows him down, right? So he puts in some damping. Then let's say he gets up here to five, right? We're not talking about the integral yet, but he's up here at five. Well, he, he, he proportional says, okay, you got no more torque. He begins to fall away. So eventually he's gonna settle down here, at, oh, I don't know, four degrees, three degrees, two degrees, at some error. That's what would happen with a PD. Now, you have error. As time goes by, you will get an integral. The integral is the area under a curve, correct? That's what integral is. It's area under a curve. So if you imagine plotting, let's do it, right? If you, if you plot theta, here's theta versus time. 
I don't know what it does at first, but eventually you end up with like a PD settling down. And you have a little bit of error, right? Then as time goes by, you got a little error there underneath there, right? A little more integral. Yeah, sure, you had integral over here. I don't know what it is. It's some number. But if it's not enough to hold you there, then you get a little bit more as time goes by. So the integral is a little bit bigger now. Ki was, you chose it, five. Okay, five times a little more integral gives you a little more torque, doesn't it? What does that tend to make it do? You can try to pull it up a little bit, right? Now the proportional is saying, oh, right? He actually, he's going to decrease. What happens to the damper? Damper says, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, no. And he begins to remove the energy. Okay, you settle down again, right? And you still have an error, okay? You settle down, the error's a little smaller now, right? But you still have some. So a little while later, you get a little bit more integral, right? See how this is going to work? So a little longer, you get a little bit more integral. Now you have a little bit bigger number that you multiply times ki. Ki, you don't ever change. I mean, once you decide it, you set it and leave it alone, right? But the integral builds, right? And so you get a little bit more torque. So what does it do? It tends to pull you up a little further. See what's happening? Do you think it's possible that you could overshoot it? Yeah, it's entirely possible. If you get your Ki up too large, you can shoot past, and then, it'll, and then you'll get a negative plot down here, and you'll start taking the integral away. And eventually, if it's stable, the thing will settle down. Make sense? And what is your steady state error when you get there? Zero. Okay? So what's the purpose of an integral? Right? You know what, you know what proportional is? That's a spring, right? You know what damping is? That's a damper, right? The P and the D. What is the, what's the purpose of the I? What did it just do? I had steady state error with the PD. I didn't like that. What did the integral do for me? He drives this steady state error to zero for a step. Okay? So do you want to use integral? Well, no. Why? Because here's the bad part of it. It also increased the S, the, the denominator. Now I've got three roots instead of two. Why does that matter? Well, now I've got problems with stability and everything else. The integral will tend to slow things down, so usually your time constant you know, goes out the window when you throw in an integral, right? Usually it just it slows way the heck down, right? It will also tend to become unstable, right? So we don't like to use them when we can avoid them, right? If you can't avoid it, then throw it in there. What's it good for? Getting rid of the steady state error. Okay? Make sense? Did you need integral on your project? No, this is the first time you heard about it, right? How come you didn't need it? When it was doing what it was supposed to do, how much torque did you want applied to the body? A lot? A little? Or none? None. When it was, when it was up here balanced and, and it was back to where it needed to be, you want to leave it alone. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Now, if it starts to swing over, you know, an ant crawls up on one side and it pins. Okay, then what do you do? You, you adjust it, right? But when it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, you've got it where you want it to be. Make sense? So that's why you didn't need an in integral. You only need a proportional derivative. Okay? Most everything that you're going to run into is going to be controllable using a PID. Most everything is. Uh, is this the only kind of controller? No. There was a uh, there was a uh, automobile company that came to us one time. Let me turn off the recorder. <laughs> okay, let's see. I think I may not have been recording. If it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's in your notes. And I will post the PDF on okay? Anyway, here's what happened. This is back in the day where we robots were young. And they were putting in, they were gluing down, I'll make it simple. They were gluing down a floor mat. And they had a gun that uh, would squirt glue out. 
Now, they could either turn the gun on or they could turn the gun off. They couldn't control the speed of the gun, which is what they should have done, but they didn't. So what they did was they said, uh, you know, we want to put this glue down real fast because we're cars are coming off the line like crazy. And here's what the robot did. They used a PD controller, and the robot would come over like this, and it would do this. And what, why is this happening? Right? It's being controlled in two directions. It's actually six degree of freedom, but you know, just think of it in you know, two directions, like a mill. You know what a mill is, right? Okay, good. Why, why was it doing this? Why do you think? With a PD controller. Well, here's what, it had a PD, so here's what it would do. It would have an X command. It'd say, where do you want me to be? I want you to be an X of one inch, two inches. Three inches, four inches. Time is now 10:30. I want you to hear. Time is now 10:31 in one second. I want you to hear. Get the idea? Okay. Once it hits that straight line, it says, "What do you want? Y constant, 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 constant." Okay. So you're not going to get any torque on the Y direction. It's doing what it's supposed to, right? You know, it, where do you want me? I want you a constant. Where are you? Constant. Okay. It doesn't apply any force in the Y direction, right? Where do you want me in the X? I want you constant. I want you constant speed, constant speed. It's not applying any force in the X direction. Then all of a sudden, right here, it says, where do you want me to, what do you want me to do? I want you to stop. What? I've been doing 40 miles an hour coming into the corner, and now you want me to stop? Is it going to be able to? No. So what happens? It says, well, what's the proportional? What's the proportional error right here? You got a large error or no? It's large? Okay. Where do you want me to be? I want you to be right here. That's zero. I'm here. This is where you want me to be. I'm here. Where do you want me to be here? I want you to be right here. No error, right? If, you, if you'd had, right? So what's going to happen is you've got to develop error. You have to have error to get a, a, a force. You have to have PD. You've got to have error or else you won't get a force. Right? You see that? So what's happening is it would have to overshoot. It has to go beyond that. Unless you put in a huge amount of damping, and then the thing won't get up and go. It'll be so sluggish, you say, hang on a minute, hang, hang on a minute, I'm trying to overcome this damper. You get the idea? Okay, so what would happen here is it says, well, I need a, uh, I need a huge force to, to stop suddenly, and I got no error. So it has to overshoot. Okay, so what do you do about that? Integral is no good because it takes time for the integral to build, right? Well, what we did was we did what's called feed forward. We said we know we're going to come to a corner because we know what you're going to be doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a torque and I'm just going to shove it in there. So here's what here's what it looks like. Let's go to yeah. Here's the diagram. It would be something like this. This would be feed forward. I would grab the, uh, the desired value, right? And I'll come up here and I'll do a calculation. I'll put it in as F. I'll calculate what the force needs to be based on that. So for example, if theta zero is constant, 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 F is zero, 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 zero. I don't need anything. But if all of a sudden it was constant, 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 stop, I need a huge amount of force. Make sense? Yes or no? I'm not asking you to do the calculation. I'm just trying to, you know, can you get your head around it? If, if all of a sudden this thing says, I want to stop, well, then I know, you forget the error, I know I need to apply a huge amount of force. And so what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll put a summing right there and I'll pop it in right there. See what I'm doing? So here's a PD. So if you get off the path, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get you back onto the path. And then what this thing is, that F, all it does is it says, yeah, but I know you need this. I know you need this. And boom, you dump it in there so that the thing will stop. Make, make a little sense? Here's my point. This is not on the exam, so you can, you know, here's my point. When you're building controllers, you're the engineer. You need to be clever. You need to say, well, Everett taught me PID. But I think there, you know, I think I could get away with it by doing this. Why? Because I know how things work. Why? Because you're an engineer and you got a good degree, right? That's what we're here for. So what you do is you say, well, I know what I need. 
I need to tell that guy to stop. And that means I want to apply a huge force. Make sense? So I'm teaching PIDs. I'm going to hold you responsible for doing PIDs and doing the calculations. When you get out there, if you're going to do it, be creative. Do something interesting. Well, first of all, if a PID works, do it, <laughs> right? Because they want the job done. But then if you find something that is really cool and neat and exciting, I'd like to know about it because I think that's right. But if you got something neat and cool and exciting and PID doesn't work, well then turn your brain on and say, yeah, but I know what to do. And you can put boxes anywhere you want to put boxes. You just have to say, you know, you don't want to grab them out of the sky. You want to have a reason for doing it. And that's where a good feel for how things work and why they work and all that kind of stuff comes in handy. Okay? All right, shall we get back to the exam now? <laughs> oh, well, well, I'll keep going. <laughs> okay. So, so I showed you P, I showed you PD, I showed you PID. Is there, do you think there's ever a PI? Yep. How about a DI? Yep. How about just I? Sometimes. How about just P? Sometimes. You get the idea? You just, you, I'm just showing you these three. You usually put them all together, but you can leave one out. Depends on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Okay, could you find, if I give you numbers, right, could you find the time constant in something like this? Now, look at this. I mean, ha look how ugly that is. Doesn't that freak you out? Find the time constant of that. So what? It's no big deal, right? That's what you should tell me. Hey, that's no big deal. It doesn't matter how ugly it looks. I'm going to, what are you going to do? I'm going to turn that into a transfer function. You know how to do that, right? <coughs> you have to be careful, right? But you can do that. And then what are you going to do? You got a transfer function. What are you going to do? The Take the denominator, set it equal to zero, and solve for k, right? No, solve for s, okay? So you can set it equal to zero, solve for s, and you're going to get s's, and they're going to have some real parts and some imaginary parts. You know what to do with those, right or no? Okay. So you can find the natural frequencies, you can find the time constants, you can find the settling time, you can find out if it's stable, right? And I'm going to try and fool you and do things like, I want to know what is kp in order to make the time constant equal to 4. You think you could do something like that? Yeah, you're going to set it equal to 0, you're going to plug all your numbers in, there's going to be a formula, and you're going to set it equal to time constant equals 4, and you're going to solve for kp. Piece of cake. Especially with Mathematica. Okay. Is that good? Can you do that? Okay. You want to do something else? Yeah. Good. Anything but system dynamics, right? <laughs> okay, let's do this. How about let's take this let's take this um, transfer function and let's do um, Let's find the uh, steady state amplitude when the input is equal to um, 5 times the sine of t. Well, make it 2t. How do you do that? And let me write down, while you're thinking about it, let me write down the, the uh, transfer function. This should be a review. Any ideas? Any ideas? <coughs> what, how do you do this? You, uh, okay, I'll solve for the output. Now what? I omega. I omega. This is the other one, right? So you have all the, and then you have the signs. 
right? So when the input's assigned, if the input is assigned it with a, in it, I'm shaking it at three uh, hertz, what is the output shaky? Let's say the natural frequency is 10 and I'm shaking it at three. What does it respond with? 10 or three? Three. three. It always responds with what you shake it at, okay? If you just apply, you know, a, you know like pushing the swing, you push, you let go, and it does what it wants to do. You push, you let go, it does what it wants to do. You're not hitting it with the sine wave, right? And what's going to happen is it's going to go at its natural. That's what it likes to do. It'll do its natural, and you just kind of kind of shove it, right? If, on the other hand, I grab the swing and I, and I do this to it, the swing will do this. It won't go very fast. It won't go very far, but it will do what I shake it, right? Make sense? Okay. So what you do with this kind of problem is you take everywhere you see an S, you put in what? Give me the number. Two times I, the imaginary number I. Okay? You remember that? Okay. So what this is is you put in KI plus KP, two capital I plus KD, uh, four, I squared times five. Where did I get that five? Yeah, that's the amplitude of the uh, of the input. Divide by J I cubed uh, two cubed is eight plus K D uh, four I squared plus K P plus M, G, L, 2I, plus KI. Then what do you do if you're using Mathematica? Yeah, you just say, I want the absolute value, the A, B, S, of this stuff. Boom. Boom. It comes back, gives you a number. What do you do if it's a complex number? You do it again because you made a mistake. Because there's only one place you can ever get a complex number on purpose where it's supposed to be complex. And where's that? Take the denominator, set it equal to zero, and solve for s. That's the only time you should get an imaginary number. If you get an imaginary number here, you did something wrong. You typed something wrong, you did something wrong because you will not get an, an imaginary number. Yeah. Why? I don't know. There's, there's theory behind it, but you have to put an I in. Oh, uh, well, uh, here it's, see that S right there? The KPS? S becomes omega times I. Two times I. And then why is there a four I squared? There's an S squared. What's an I squared? If you want to do it by hand, what's an I squared? Negative one, so then this guy would become a negative and get rid of that. If you want to do it by hand, what's an IQ? Minus I. So you can put a negative here and put an I there. That's in the old days, right? Now with Mathematica, don't worry about it, just shove it in there. You can do that, yes? Okay, see how I'm getting you ready for the final? Or the whole thing. Okay, how about we do another, uh, we'll start over and we'll say, okay, you know what, uh, I've got that pendulum and it's got a torque, but you know, it's not realistic for, you know, by the way, uh, the way this thing works, let's go back to the block diagram. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a uh, blue circle around all of the stuff that's inside the Arduino. All of this stuff right here would be inside the Arduino. See that? So what would happen is you would have this theta. You would have to ha you would have to tell the Arduino what theta is. So you'll have a, a measuring device, some sort of sensor that would tell you. The Arduino would say, "Oh, you're at 30 degrees." Okay, then the Arduino would make all these decisions, and then what it will do is it outputs a number. But according to this block diagram, that's got to be torque. How in the world is Arduino going to apply a torque? Well, you're going to buy a motor, right? Where are you going to put the motor? Uh-oh. Where are you going to put the motor? 
you're going to put it right between the Arduino and the pendulum. It's where you're going to put it, right? Isn't that true? So the Arduino will give it a voltage, right? And the, and the voltage then gets applied to, to the motor. The motor then generates a torque. See how that works? And then the torque is applied to the pendulum. The pendulum moves. Okay. So let's do, since we want practice, since you want practice, drawing block diagrams. Let's, let's draw a block diagram of a, of a DC motor. Okay. And then I'll show you how it fits in there. Okay, do you remember the equations for a DC motor? DC motor. Try to make some sense out of this since I'm not sure I'm recording it. Here are the equations for a DC motor. It looked like this. There was a resistor here. There was an inductor. There was the motor component. It generated a torque and it gave you a speed. This was grounded and you put a voltage there. This was a resistor. This was an inductor. Not to belabor the point, but here's the equation for that motor. It went V minus R. I is the current going through the motor. R I minus L I dot minus this voltage right here was called the back EMF. It was KB times speed. KB times speed equals zero. And there was another one that said torque equals KT times current. Now, I want to draw a, a diagram of that. Okay, so final exam. Boom. Here you go. Here's an equation. When you want to practice, you're going to start right, you're going to write those two equations down. You're going to close your notes and you're going to derive the block diagram and then open it up and say, yeah, I got it right. Okay, boom. You're in good, okay? Yeah, you are. Okay, you ready? How many equations you got? Two, I'm gonna draw two diagrams. And if possible, I'm gonna hook them together. But I don't know, okay? So I've got two equations. All right, what variable do I solve for out of the top equation? Is it omega, KB, I, L, R, or V? Why omega? How do you know? How did I teach you? Okay, that's where you want to be, right? But this equation, what do you solve this equation for? You should know. Why I? Highest derivative. The output variable of the equation is the highest derivative. Remember that? So if you don't know anything else, you look at that and go, well, it's pretty clear it's got to be the I. So now you're right. Eventually I'm going to come down to a a voltage and a speed, because that's what I want, but that's not what that equation tells me. That equation is going to tell me the I. You see, and I'm, now I'm going to take the I, stick it in here, and I get the torque. See, that's where that's where I'm going to end up, right? Torque, torque on the vertical, not voltage. <coughs> torque on the vertical and speed on the horizontal, right? Motor curve. Okay. So first thing to do, step one, find out what who's the variable that I'm going to solve for. Last time it was theta. You remember that? Okay. So it's I. Let's diagram this uh, equation right here for I, okay? So what I do is I take all of the high derivatives of I and I shove them over to the right-hand side. You can do whatever makes sense to you, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this guy right here, and I'm going to move him over to here. I'm just going to do that in my head because I'm good, right? And then I'm going to build up the left-hand side. How do you build up the left-hand side? I say, okay, I've got a V, I've got a RI, I've got a KB omega, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say, okay, I've got a summer. I'm going to get the V. Where? I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it right now. He's got a plus sign. I need an RI. Okay, I'm going to get it somewhere. I don't know where, but I'm going to get an RI. I'll label it right there. There's an RI. I'm going to put him in with a negative. What else do I need? KB omega. Okay, I'm going to put in a, somewhere, somehow, I'm going to get one. I'll put a negative on there, and I'm going to put a KB, probably should off, put it off to the center. KB omega. 
I'll worry about them in a minute. Okay? What comes out of that circle? Yeah, this is going to be the left-hand side, we'll call it. You can call it anything you want, but it's the left-hand side that I've just created. So far okay? All right, now I'm trying to get I, right? Because I is what's coming out of that equation. I've determined that. Okay, so if I want I, this left-hand side, that equals L-I dot, L-S-I. I want I, not L-S-I. What do I do? Yeah, I could divide by L and then divide by S, or you can divide by LS, whatever. Shall we do it all in one? Divide by LS? Okay. So is that a circle or what? It's a square. Okay, so you put a rectangle in here, and you put 1 over LS. Okay, then what comes out of here? I, right? That's I. Hey, man, I need an I. Not quite. I, what do I need? All right, okay, how about this? I'll grab a hold of I, I'll bring him down here, I'm going to put him into either a, a round thing or a box. What do I want? Box. Why a box? Because I want to multiply, right? What am I going to put inside the box? R. And then, ah, what comes out of here? All right, or I R or whatever. I'm going to take that and shove him in right there. Hot diggity. Uh-oh, I got two... Two things unconnected. Oh, man. Not to panic, I have another equation. Right? Don't I have another equation? Okay. So what happens is I suddenly realize I got two things going in. Well, I better go find those guys somewhere. I'm not done yet. Because anything left unconnected, that's got to be an input. And is KB uh, omega an input? No way. Okay, well, what in the world am I going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to diagram that next one. Let's put him in in, uh, in blue. We'll put him in over here. Okay, who's the output? Hmm, who's got the higher derivative? Ouch. I don't see any derivatives in there, do you? Okay, well, man, what am I going to do? Well, rule number two that I taught you, right? <coughs> One equation solves for one unknown. You don't use two equations for the same thing, right? So what did you use the top equation for? I? Then don't use the second one for I. That's not the way it works. You don't use two things to get one guy. I mean, that's stupid, right? Okay, so what do you want to solve the second guy for? T. Okay, there you go. Can you diagram that guy? That's how I know T comes out and I goes in, right? Make sense? Sure does. Oh, okay, good. Glad I'm really connecting to y'all. Okay, so what goes in? Whoops. He's right. I goes in. Why? Because I comes out of the other guy. You don't use this guy for the same thing. Okay, what comes out? And what goes inside this box? You're right. How am I going to connect him? I'm missing something. Not to worry. What am I missing? What am I missing? I got a motor. I got a voltage. I got a shaft. Where's my load? What's the motor connecting? In simplified form, it looked like this, right? There was a transfer function in here, which I'm, I'm not too worried about. It. I'll call it pinned. You have it in your notes. What comes out of this guy? Theta. What goes in? Torque. Oh, I see what's happening. Okay, what's, what's going to happen is the motor 
is going to connect to the pendulum. And what about this theta? What is this? What's omega? Theta dot. Okay, now I've got theta. What am I going to do with this theta? Multiply by s. What comes out of here? Theta dot or omega. Same thing, right? Because they're connected together. Okay, so this is omega comes out of here. Is that what I need? Yeah, so I put it through a KB. Could I make that KBS in the previous guy? Of course. Yeah, sure. And then what comes out of here? KB omega. Bingo. Now, how many things are, are, oh, excuse me. Yeah, okay. How many things are disconnected going in? Coming out is okay. Going in. How many things going in that are not connected up? I see a V over here. The blue diagram. Is he all connected up? Where am I going to get the I? Are they all connected up now? All except for what? The voltage. Okay, all except for the voltage. So what's the input? Voltage. What's the output? Well, that's a trick question. What do you What do you want? You want theta? Okay. You want theta dot? No, no, no. I want KB theta. No, I want I. No, I want torque. No, I want. What do you want? You solve for what you want, right? Can you do that? Sure. There's 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06. Which one do you want? 03. Got it. No, no, no. I want 04. Got it. No, I want 07. Got it. Right. So, which one is the out? What do you want? You want to know the position? You, are you interested in where the car is or how fast the car is going? What do you want? I don't know. What problem are you solving? Right? But you ought to be able to say, well, what's the input? It's got to be voltage. Right? It's got to be voltage. Okay, so now what's going to happen? Well, here's your Arduino over here. The Arduino is going to say, I want a voltage of 12. No, no, tell you what, I want a voltage of 6. How's the, how's the Arduino going to give you a voltage of 12 or 6 or, or 2 or 1 or 0.1? Well, what you, you like to, but what you do is you use a FET. Right? You use a FET and you turn it on and off. PWM, you remember PWM? It's not on the test, but you know what a PWM is? Pulse width modulation? Pulse width modulation. What happens if I want... If the FET is connected to 12 volts, I turn the FET on all, on all the time, I get 12 volts on the motor, right? Okay, I want it half on. What do I do? Turn the FET on for a second, turn it off for a second. On for a second, off for a second. On for, right? Now, the speed that you turn it on and off, do you really want it to be one second, one second, one second, one second? Why not? Why not? Because there's a time constant to the motor, right? If you leave it on for an hour, turn it off for an hour, on average, you got half the power. But what's going to happen? That motor is going to scream for an hour until all of a sudden it goes off for an hour. And you will see the difference, right? But if you go real fast, the motor can't respond because by the time it starts up there, you're saying, well, I want you down here now. And it'll try to respond. It can't because it takes a time constant to get 62% of the way. So if you flip it again before the time constant, it's going to say, man, come on, what are you doing to me? It'll average out. That's what PWM does. Okay? So here's how you're going to connect it to your Arduino. So you're going to fly something maybe? I don't know. Then what you're going to do is you're going to adjust these voltages to get more torque from one particular rotor. Make sense? Now the real trick is to balance it. Right? See how it kind of fits together? Okay, so on the final exam, you should be able to take a differential equation and draw a block diagram. Okay, you should be able to take a block diagram, simplify it down to a transfer function. I've shown you one example, I'll show you some more, where you can take a motor and you'll take a, a pendulum and you'll connect them to block diagrams together. Okay, you'll be able to, once you have the transfer function, tell me the time constant, the natural frequency, stable or not, 
uh, steady state values. You can do all of those things, right? So what's new? Block diagrams, I think. So far, so good? Okay. You want to do another one? I'm not sure if we have time. Maybe 43. Yeah, I think I've got, I can do it. Everybody ready? Okay, let's do something besides motors. We'll have a tank of fluid. You have Q going in. Uh, Q in. And you got something coming out. I think we did this one before. And uh, just to keep it simple, I'm going to say the amount coming out is a constant. This is going to be tank number one. Constant times the height of the fluid. Okay? Is everybody okay with that? It's actually square root, and then you have to linearize it. I want to skip past that right now. Okay? So there's a, uh, a guy. How do you find the equations for this thing? Do you remember? <coughs> What goes in minus what comes out equals time rate of change? Uh, Bernoulli equation, uh, I'm not sure. Try that, but I don't think so. Bernoulli is more for uh, speed versus pressure, right? It, uh, but what I would do is I'd say I'm going to count mass, right? There's five things you count, mass, energy, da, 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 da. I'm going to count the mass. So I'm going to count the mass that comes in minus the mass that goes out equals the time rate of change in mass or the change in mass, okay? So here we go. What's the mass that comes in? Density times gallons per minute or gallons per second. How much goes out? Density times the, the speed that it goes out, gallons per second or whatever, equals time rate of change, the change of the mass that's in there. Density times the area times height. Density, area, height, that's the amount of mass that's in there, right? Density is, let's say, constant, so we'll just get rid of it. And so what are you left with? You're left with QN minus C1H1 equals A1H1. Okay, here comes the final exam question. Ready? What do you think I'm going to ask you? Draw a block diagram of that, right? Well, I could ask y'all, is it stable? Is the time constant? Is it blah, 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 blah. Or, uh, hey, let's do the new thing. Let's draw a diagram of that. Okay. What's the output variable? Whoops, I forgot something. There's a dot on this guy, isn't there? You let me get away with it. Didn't shame on me. Okay. What's the output variable? Is it Q? Is it H1? Is it A? Is it C? Yeah, A is a, is a parameter. C is a parameter. It's how big is a hole and all that kind of thing, right? So H is your variable. And I'm going to solve for H, H1, because it's got the higher derivative. Okay? All right, so can you draw a diagram of that? You do it, and I'll do it. Y'all get that one? <coughs> now the real test of whether you got it right, because sometimes you can draw them you know, in, a, in a different way than your buddy, and they'll be the same thing. How would you know that yours is the same as your friend's? You're going to get your transfer function, which you can do in Mathematica. Q 
he'll get his transfer function, which he hopefully can do in Mathematica. And then you're going to look at them, and if they're the same, then your diagram is the same. That's the easiest way to do it. Right? What do you think is going to be the next question on the final exam? I mean, I, I'm not, this isn't on the final exam, but something very similar might be, right? Might be. Yeah, you, I'd say, what, what's the transfer function? Go from the block diagram, give me the transfer function. O1, O2, O3, you know how to do it, right? Next thing I'm going to do in the next class, I'm going to put a bucket down here. I'm going to catch it. I'm going to tie that system to this system. Just like we took the pendulum and connected the motor to it, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take another tank. I'm going to write the differential equation. I'm going to draw this block diagram. And then I'm going to connect the block diagrams together as a second example of how to connect them. Okay? Everybody okay with that? All right. Do you have something you can practice? Yes, you do. You can do these again. Okay. You have a question? Uh, this is A1S. Right? So the left hand side, divide by A1S. Left hand side, right? Divide by A1S gives me H. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, where do you find the force on the tables? Is there something that is force called? Yeah, it has a different name than yours. Yeah. Where do you find what? Um, you to be your yeah. Let me close down and then I and then I can listen because <laughs> I don't want to lose it. I've done that before. <laughs> 